sight for sore eyes. Shiningly clean and tidy cows grazing on lush pastures. This bull must be really lucky. The whole picture is the epitome of animal welfare. The cows are well fed and happy. Holland just pales in comparison. And the milkmaids are also so happy and good looking. Oh, pretty Ukrainian girls. Shining streams of fresh top quality milk filling the buckets to the brims. Gorgeous milk. And how tasty was the butter made from that milk? Definitely not worse than that made in Holland. And this piglet could easily star in the Babe movie. Remember the old children's rhyme. Old MacDonald had a farm. But if poor old MacDonald saw this farm, he would be green with envy. And there is so much grain, more than enough. Huge export potential. That will shut up those who slander the happy country of Soviets. The whole world will see that the Soviet Union is flourishing. And that's exactly what we need. Seeing is believing. Let them see it all. And relax. In the Chronicle, this film is dated 1936. In fact, it was made earlier. Note the date of this newspaper, which was printed right out in the field and delivered by young pioneers to various workplaces. It wasn't without a reason that the leader of world proletariat, Vladimir Lenin, said, of all the arts, the cinema is the most important for us. Thus, civilized countries had no qualms about buying Ukrainian grain, as judging from that documentary, Ukraine had plenty to spare. Collective farmers used to read those propaganda leaflets during their lunch breaks in field canteens after proper three-course meals of gorgeous Ukrainian borscht, meat with potatoes and pancakes with sour cream. Then they would sing some lovely Ukrainian songs to raise their working spirits and get back to the fields. The Film Harvest Festival provided the leaders of civilized countries with a convenient opportunity to see nothing but prosperity in Ukraine and therefore to accept Ukrainian grain with a clear conscience. The film was made up to high professional standards and its message rang loud and clear. Under Tsarism, these fields never yielded such bountiful crops of wheat. True, such collective farms did exist as a form of window dressing. There's an interesting coincidence of historic events. In 1929, the first world economic crisis began, the Great Depression. In 1934, it came to an end, and 30 leading countries of the world invited the Soviet Union to join the League of Nations, as if to thank the country for being a huge market for their heavy machinery and an exporter of cheap grain. Thus, the world adopted the attitude, see no evil, hear no evil. Speaking at the 17th Congress of the Soviet Bolshevik Party, the top Red Officer Kliment Voroshilov stated clearly, we consciously opted for the famine because we needed grain, but those who were victims of the famine were only the non-working elements and kulaks. Just think about it. We consciously opted for famine because we needed grain. But those words fell on deaf ears of the world community.
This is an ancient Ukrainian town of Ostrych. A very special place which has played a prominent role in the history and culture of our country. Here, the first Ukrainian books were printed and the first students studied at the first Ukrainian academy. Back in 1933, Ostrych was Polish territory. This river, Vilia, marked the Soviet-Polish border. Winding its way through this land, this narrow strip of water was an insurmountable divide between two worlds. On the other side of the river, beyond those reeds, there was a totally different life. От, власне, ми, як школяри, ходили туди, і тоді ми бачили по радянських всіх пограничників, бо границя мала ж багато більшу охорону, і вони сиділи там на деревах в лісі, в своїх будьонках, і ми там на них спозирали. A little further into Ukraine's territory, some 10 kilometers from the river, there was one more dividing line drawn by Stalin right in those years. Apart from other reasons, it was meant to hide the grim Soviet reality behind a solid iron curtain. But was it possible? Anguished cries pierced even those slabs of concrete. That's why the cover-up operation was launched to drown those cries in deafening fanfare. Кількох поруків із Збруча перейшли нелегально через Збруч і в селі пішли найметами поміж люди. У вас тут рай, у вас тут небо, каже. Дивіться, каже. Прийшли до церкви, виходять, станете з собою, говорите. Більший круг, менший круг. Каже, папіроси курять, запрошують себе в гостину. Один до другого ходить і каже, що ж можна бути краще? Хліб є, до хліба є, розумієте, свободно можна і поговорити, і поспівати, і так далі, розумієте. Чомусь кажуть, чому ви маєте не годувати своїм положенням, знаєте. А в нас, каже, того не можна. Наприклад, заспівав, наприклад, прийшов до Кравця один із цих, і каже, а парубок, мій друг такий, Федь Будник, заспівав, щось думе моє, щось думе моє, розумієте. А він каже, а у вас хіба можна то співати? Вмієте? А каже, та чому воно на Шевченкова пісня, чому ж не можна співати? А в нас, каже, то його. І того остерігаєшся. Взагалі, який набудь натяг патріотизму і з приватної особи на сцені, на показ, то могло бути, то для пропаганди то місто є. Але внутрі хотіли просто сказати, щоб всі просто сказати, або мовчали, або хвалили владу, більш нічого. 